MOSFET memory cells. Here's an example of a non-volatile memory cell. The reason it's non-volatile is the charge that's stored on the capacitor here uh, stays on the capacitor. There's no way for it to char have a charge or discharge through the gate because of the infinite input impedance of the gate. I won't talk about um, how we change the charge on this. We'll just talk about how this works. So if we've got the, uh, the read line, R, if that is low, it means that MOSFET B is not going to conduct, which separates uh, the input-output line or the data line from point X on here. If R is high, then MOSFET B is going to be conducting, which means that uh, the data line is going to be connected to point X. And the state of point X depends on whether the capacitor is charged or not. If the capacitor is charged, then it means that MOSFET A is going to be conducting, which means that point X is going to be connected to 0 volts. So if R is high, the data line is going to be connected to 0 volts. So if the capacitor is charged, the uh, data line is at 0 volts. If the capacitor is not charged, the MOSFET B is not going to conduct, so there's no connection to 0 volts. X is going to be held at 5 volts. So if there's no charge on the capacitor and R is high, that means that the data line will be high. We've got two versions, uh, slight variations of uh, read and write memory location. So this would be RAM cell. Uh, what we've got here, we've got a tri-state connected to W and uh, sorry, tri-state connected to the um, gate and the MOSFET and the capacitor and another tri-state connected from X to the data line here. So if W is high, we've got a connection through the tri-state so that the capacitor can charge and discharge through tri-state uh, from the NOT gates here. Which means that the voltage at C is going to be the opposite to what's on the data line. So if we've got a NOT here, it's going to be a 1. If we've got a 1 here, it's going to be NOT. And the voltage at X, if this is high, this is going to be low. So if we've got a high on the data line, C is going to be low, which means X is going to be high and vice versa. So X is going to store exactly the same uh, data as we've got on the data line here. If W is low, the capacitor is going to keep its charge because it's disconnected. So at least uh, the tri-state disconnects it from anything else. And X is going to stay the same. So that data is now stored. If R is high, then X is going to be connected to the data line. And R, if R is low, then it's disconnected. Uh, data lines are disconnected from X. So in that regard, it works exactly the same as the flip-flop memory cell. So let's look at another variation of this. Notice that we've moved the uh, inverter from here to here. So if W is high, capacitor can um, charge or discharge through the tri-state, uh, which means that C is going to be the same as what we've got there, and X is going to be the, the opposite. So if we've got a 1 here, C is going to be a 1, which means this MOSFET conducts, which means X is going to be 0. If this is uh, a 0, this would be a 0. MOSFET doesn't con conduct, so this is going to be a 1 here. If W is low, then the capacitor is going to keep its charge, so X is going to stay the same, so the data is now stored. If R is held high, then it means that the data line is going to be connected to X bar. So, uh, in other words, um, yes, yeah, so the data line is going to be connected to X bar, which is opposite of X. So, if we've got a zero here uh, at C, X is going to be a one, X bar is going to be a zero. So a zero here connects the data line to a zero. A one here, that's going to be zero, that'll be a one. So a one at C, if the capacitor is charged, means that the input-output line will be high. If R is low, we disconnect uh, the data line from X bar, as before. 